be in the book of Galatians today, chapter 5. Book of Galatians, chapter 5. I'm wearing the week, week 2 of the sermon series called the, the Lies We Believe. Book of Galatians, chapter 5, pick up on verse 13. We're going to read down to uh, verse 18, just a few verses there. If you're there, say amen. 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 All right, let's see what God's Word has to say to us this morning. For you, brethren, have been called in liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do these things that you wish. But if you were led by the Spirit, you were not under the law. As I was reading these passages, I had many different things I had ideas about and what to preach and what not, and I was looking at these passages, and as I was thinking, the Galatian people, they seem to be much like us. Sometimes they get off course. They get led astray. They start out fast and strong in their faith. Well, somehow something happens along the way. But there's good news. You know, until we take our last breath, that means if you're sitting here today, you haven't taken your last breath yet. There is still hope for us. There is still hope for us. It's not all bad news. There is still hope. God warns His people all throughout the Scripture. He warns. Now, warnings sound like something you, know, you don't really want. I don't like getting warnings. But they're there. They're helpful. That means if God is warning us, there's still an opportunity. There's still hope. I can do the right thing. I have that choice to do the right thing. I'm just being warned over and over again. They started out fast and strong, but sometimes we go astray. I'm not sure what that is. We get tired. We get worn out. We listen to all the voices in the crowd, and somehow, some way, we end up somewhere. We don't even know how we got there. Our blessings come from God the Creator, not the law set in place by man. They ultimately come from God. But we, we have liberty. But, but the thing about it is we need to remember the liberty that we have is supposed to be used to produce fruits of the Spirit as Christians. It's supposed to be used for that, not other things. We have opportunity to get it right. Maybe, you know, we all fall short. Because, you know, all fall short of the glory of God. The Scripture says that. That means we're none perfect. But we have time to get it right. We've got time to give our very best and not what's left. We've got time to get it right. Have we made mistakes along the way? Yes. Have we sinned along the way? Yes. But we have time to get it right. When, I, when you think back where you came from and what God has brought you through, that doesn't mean it was easy. doesn't mean you haven't had trials and tribulations. But you can think back how God has brought you through it. I've mentioned the last couple weeks, and I don't know God is speaking through me through them. You know, I, once again, I heard, two, I heard a song this week that I hadn't heard in so many years. One was when I was just scanning the stations on the radio. I was, at, I was going down the road as I was working, that's it, and the song popped on a lot. I'm like, oh, wow, I haven't heard that one in a long time. But the funny thing is, I heard the exact same song that I hadn't heard in years, like three days later, in a store that I went and got a sandwich in. It was playing over the speakers. <laughs> What in the world? God is trying to tell me something. I don't know what he would be trying to tell me through that song. <laughs> but I'm telling you, he speaks through all kinds of things. All the memories that come back, some, some good, some bad. I don't know what it is about music, but doesn't it have a way of stirring our yeah. soul and bringing back memories? Yes. And I don't know why, but it certainly yeah. does. Yeah. And I was also thinking, I remember some of the things that I used to do when I was listening to that song. I'm like, how much different is my life now than it was then? Doesn't mean I've arrived because none of us arrive until we take our last breath, last breath here and our first breath, breath in heaven. But I'm telling you, God has a plan all along through all of it. The Galatian people, they started out fast and strong in their faith. Oh my gosh, they, did start, they, they were running so hard toward Jesus. 
but then somehow they exchanged it for something else. And in the scripture, he tells us the Galatian people exchanged it for works. Works, there's nothing wrong with works, but you can't put them before God. You can't put them before your faith. There's some people that actually need to take note of that. Work, works are a good thing. They're not evil. But you can't put them before God and you can't put them before your faith. That's the problem. Sometimes we get the order mixed up. And Paul here was trying to assure them of some things. That your blessings that come from God are based on faith and not the law and not your works. Our faith is found in God. And it should produce some fruits of the Spirit. If you're not sure, I don't have time to go through all the fruits of the Spirit today, but they're ready in the Scriptures. If you would like to look that up, that would be an awesome study for you. Now let's do a little backdrop here before I move on. Now Paul was... Uh, Paul visited this area on his second missionary journey. You know, you know, he, he, would, he was everywhere. You know, and, and he revisited churches he had start, started on his third trip. So he was going back to see what was going on. You know, when you can't lead people to their own accord, you know that, right? If you lead people to their own accord, well, look at it. You don't know what you might come back to. <laughs> yeah. I had a friend of mine one time. Well, I'll just say, when you can when you, uh, when you lead people to themselves, you don't know what might happen. I don't know why this comes to my mind. It wasn't in my scripture. I, it's just an example of you can't lead people to themselves. A friend of mine went on vacation one time. He left his uh, two teenage sons home alone. They were like 16 at the time. Something like that. Very mature, he said. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then uh, well, when he come back, you know, everything looked fine. And then uh, like the next day, he went out there to uh, get in his pool. And he couldn't understand what was going on. He'd seen all these holes in the bottom of his pool. And they were all exactly the same size. Like little round holes all in the bottom of his pool. Everywhere. Of course, nobody knew what happened to him. Nobody. It was a mystery, right? Aliens must have did it or something. Right? Nobody knew how they got there. When it finally came out, what had happened, these mature 16-year-olds uh, of his had been uh, decided it was a good idea when they went swimming, they found this long pole. And they, they would stand back and they would run and they would pole vault themselves into the pole. And then they decided it was even better, they would pole vault over the pole. So they would jab it inside the pole and fling themselves over top of it. <laughs> what I may say by that is, you can't lead people to their own accord. And so Paul was going back, because you don't know what you might find, just like my friend didn't know what he was find. Who would have thought anything such, right? You never know what you might find. But the thing about it is, some of the converts that had been saved when Paul first went through, now that they were getting more mature in the Lord and they were moving up into leadership. But somehow, some way, they had got these strange thoughts in their mind. Somehow, these Gentile believers, these Gentiles were getting saved, but they were trying to, say, basically saying, if you put it in a nutshell, Jesus wasn't enough by saying this. They were trying to put the converts underneath not only Christ, but the Mosaic Law. See, they were trying to add something else to it. Jesus is enough. You don't need anything extra. And I've had some well-meaning people in my life, and I, sometimes I mean, I know they mean well, but it's just like they're trying to add more to it. They're trying to make your relationship with God much more than it needs to be. They're trying to make this so much harder. You've got to do this and you've got to do that. Well, well-meaning can really damage some people sometimes if you don't know what you're talking about. You're well-meaning. I've been well-meaning at times, and I realized later on, I was like, I probably did more harm there than I did good. And I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to. But that's kind of where Paul was with this. Paul had to reassure them, as we see in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1, that we were, Christ freed us from bondage of the law and sin. Now, hallelujah that He freed us. He died on the cross for our sins. We all praise God for that. But you know He also freed you from the bondage of the law. Yes. There's a lot of things, you know, a lot of people try to do. and They try to add to it. God is enough. God is enough. Amen. There's something, as I talk to Christians nowadays, there's a word that I hardly ever hear. Holiness. Being holy. Now, when I think about that, I know through the Scriptures, you know, when I think of myself, I'm like, that's not me. I, I could never possibly be these things. 
What I'm going to say is, with God, that you are enough. Through Christ Jesus, you are enough. Yeah. What, what, what I hear is, I, I don't hear people coming to me with questions saying, you know what, I'm striving to be holy. How can I get there, Pastor? I don't hear those things. What I hear is basically, if you were just to boil it down, is how much can I get away with and still go to heaven? That's what the questions are. That's what they come to. How much can I get away with and still go to heaven? You don't hear people talking about holiness, being holy and trying to, to be more like God. How much can I get away with? Holiness is not popular. You know why? Because living a life of holiness is not a power. When you live a life of holiness, it's actually one of surrender. Yeah. You have to surrender to God. And we don't want to surrender to anything. Us in this country, in the United States, I love this country, but we are rebellious people. Amen. As a whole, in general. Not every single person, but as a whole, we're yeah. rebellious people. We don't want to listen to anybody. That's right. Our society today has a problem with authority. There's some people that God has put over me in different positions in life through the years. I have no idea why. They drove me crazy. <laughs> but He did it for a reason. I have no idea why. You see, position with no authority, we think that's not for us. There's some positions I've seen that I would never want in this world. They, some physicians, they have all the responsibility, but no authority. That job is awful. Because you get hammered, and you can't do anything about it. People can say anything and talk to you any kind of way, and you can't do anything about it. Those jobs, nobody wants. Sometimes people seek out positions of authority, thinking that I'll have all this power and all this authority to only find out once they get that job, it's not all what they thought it was. They think this job is going to be wonderful. But see, all they seen was the stuff up front. All oh, going to be in the spotlight. Yeah. And spotlight can turn into an interrogation light. When you seek out those kind of jobs, you know, you find that you don't see all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. But you ever notice positions in this life that require surrender and sacrifice? They come a dime a dozen. You can get them anywhere. Nobody wants those jobs. I have to listen to somebody else. I certainly know what I'm doing. How many times have you said, if I had the boss's job, they don't know what they're doing. Sometimes we get an inflated ego of ourselves. We think we got it all figured out. You know, uh, there's a lot of things in this life. And, and the, more, the more you mature in Christ, the more you should see that you don't have it figured out. That's right. I don't have all the answers. As a young man, I thought I had all the answers. And little did I realize, I got hardly none of them. The one thing I have figured out is, without God, I am nothing, and I'm never going to make it. Amen. Now, we just, in the last two months, back in May, I know it's July 7th right now, but graduations, every year, you get high school graduations, college graduations all across the land. And I can't tell you how many I've sat in where the class president will come up front. There's two things that I've heard a lot of them. They'll, they'll try, they're trying to pump the crowd up, you know what? They, I've heard is we rock. And something else that I heard is we are going to rule the world. <laughs> but there's a problem with that. Tomorrow comes. And when tomorrow comes, the reality sets in. You don't rock so much and you're not going to rule the world. All the reality sets in. See, it comes with just a maturing process that should happen. And it don't come with just being saved. You can be saved for your entire, most of your life. And someone else has been saved for a short, a much shorter period of time. They can be much more mature in their walk. Yeah. The only thing that being saved a long time does is give you more opportunity mm -hmm. to become mature. It doesn't make you mature. Yeah. It doesn't make you mature. That's a choice that you have to make on your own. But see, we think, you know, we think that heaven is going to be like this world sometimes. In this world, they give awards to everybody. You just showed up. You get an award. You know what? We want everyone to feel included. Now, don't get me wrong. I like to feel included when I go to places, too. Don't get me wrong there. But I was also under the impression if you do nothing, you get nothing. That's right. 
Yeah. You don't get an award for just breathing. That's something God did for you. Why would you get an award for that? God put breath in your lungs. You don't get an award for that. When you look at heaven, the Apostle Paul talks in the, in the Scripture, talks about crowns that we're going to receive one day when we get to heaven. You know, those crowns, you'll, you will receive those crowns based on what you did here on this earth. You know, Jesus is, uh, God is just not going to walk around, all right, here's a crown, here's a crown, here's a crown. We can make sure everybody's included. You get the same one. I know you did a lot more for the cause of Christ, but I'm going to give you the same one as that one that barely got in. Now, you, the crowns you will receive will be based on what you did here on this earth. And don't get me wrong, you are saved by grace. Never forget that. You're not saved by works. But if you're a saved, there should be some works happening. There are far too many Christians that like to sit on the sidelines. That should not be happening. Some people want to be considered sanctified or holy for just believing. You know you're not sanctified or holy for just believing, right? If that was the case, then the demons would be holy and sanctified because the demons even believe in God. They know He exists. They know He's real. They fell from heaven. That doesn't make them holy. We get one life. One life here. You get one. You know they say a cat has nine lives. Well, we get one. <laughs> now, we know a cat doesn't have nine lives. But we get one here. We get one. Now, how many years you get here is all going to be different for each of us. You get one. And when it's over, it's over here. How many people have I seen, countless people, at the end of their days... They're just full of regret of the things that they did and didn't do for all these different reasons. All the things that they became well known for. I didn't hear anything about them. I didn't hear anything about this stuff. People that were so far from God all of a sudden they're talking about God now. See, it changes everything. Very few people their disposition was very honorary and mean in this life. I've met some of those that we all have. The vast majority of them at the end of their days, that temperament changed. The vast majority. Not all, but the vast majority. You know, when we live this life, many people, you know, you want to be remembered for certain things in this life. I did this. You want to be remembered for the good things you did, not the bad things. But it tends, to, it tends to be that we tend to remember the bad things when we do the good. Are you living a life you want to be remembered for? It's amazing how many people live their life one way but want to be remembered another way. I can't tell you how many funerals I've done when, when I hear things about the person. It's nobody I ever knew. I'm like, that person, I didn't know that person. Oh, this person was so wonderful, they'd give you the shirt off their back. That's not the person that I knew. Not the person that I knew. Countless people. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, you see God speaks to us in many different ways. In this life, when you go out tomorrow, God speaks to us in so many different ways, through people, from things, through places, through events. And in the scriptures, God spoke to us many different ways. He spoke to us through the teachings of Jesus. He spoke to us through many, uh, the Apostle Paul. He, in the Old Testament, he spoke to us through the prophets in many different ways. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, 1 to, 1 to 7. The book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, I should say, he has a lot to say here. You see, usually prophets, when God had something to say through the prophet, he usually went through a sequence of things. First, nobody wanted to see a prophet come into their town because they're like, oh, wait a minute here. You know, when, are you bringing bad news basically or whatever? And, you know, sometimes they said no or whatever. But many times when a prophet came to town, first thing he would do, he would give the bad news. They were under judgment or got a warning from God or what have you. He would give the bad news. But see, there was something. God didn't leave us in the bad news. Because not only did the prophet bring the bad news, he would usually give them a path to repentance. He didn't leave them in their sins. There was a path to repentance. 
the good news is then, even though this nation has gone astray, I love this nation, but this nation has gone astray and gone away from God. Yes. That's the bad news. But God has still has been warning us in so many ways. There's still a path because we still have time. We're still a nation. We're still a people. We're still breathing. We still have time. God has given us a path to repentance. But we've got to receive it. The good news is God is not done with us yet. Because if He is, that would be bad news for us. There is still time, even though it doesn't seem like it, with all the things happening in this nation. In that particular scripture in the book of Isaiah, I'm not going to read that to you. I'd like to give the reference of. Basically what it said there, the, uh, the book of Isaiah, it says, God is saying, I have given you my best. What more could I have done for you? But in return, I am receiving a bad crop from you. So basically what God is saying through the prophet Isaiah is, what I'm going to do is tear it all down and start all over again. Unfortunately, sometimes that has to happen to us in our life. Sometimes everything has to be taken from us. Our life feels like it has to be in shambles and torn down. And sometimes we just need to start all over again because we have made a complete mess. God had invested in them just as He invested in us. You say, God invested in me? Yeah, He did. He has. He's still doing it. God is investing in you. But you know what? God expects a return on His investment. The parable of the talents in the book of Matthew chapter 25 speak of that. That's not something I'm just making up. He speaks clearly about that. I believe God deals with us just as He dealt with the nation of Israel. Over and over again, He warns His people to turn from their wicked ways, but us as a nation, what have we done? You can tell a lot about a people in a nation is how they treat the people that are most vulnerable. Look at the abortion that has been allowed. Thank God the Supreme Court overturned that, but it's allowed in certain states still. You know, it's up to the state. But look at the millions and millions of babies that have been murdered out of convenience. That speaks a lot about our nation and really where we are. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 13, when we just read, Paul is speaking to the people that are trusting in the law to make them right before God. I assure you, no law is ever going to make you right. No law in any sort of situation. No law is going to ever make you right before God. I don't care how good a person you are. You know that law that we obey, it's never intended to give you freedom. It's not, that wasn't intentions of it. Many times we use the law as an excuse to justify our sins. Because there's many things that I'm allowed to do as a citizen of this country, an adult, that I should never be participating in as a Christian. We like to justify our sins. What's the old saying goes? We would rather ask for forgiveness than permission. I'd like to go ahead and do it first, and then I'm going to ask God to forgive me. We mix our rights up as Americans and Christians. They know they're not the same right. As, 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 an, as a citizen of this country, I can act like a fool. I'm allowed to do that. I can act like a fool. But God's Word makes no provisions for that. <laughs> You know, you can fulfill all the laws you want, but you can be not in God's will. How many times have you heard the saying, do what comes naturally? Do what makes you happy. Like, do what comes naturally. If each one of us in this room did what comes naturally, we would be in trouble. <laughs> if we would do what made us exactly happy, every one of us in this room would be in trouble. Can you imagine what you'd be doing when you left here today? I can't imagine what's running through your mind right now. What would make you happy and do, do what comes naturally? I don't want to know. Keep it to yourself. But woo, I can you imagine what's running through people's minds? We can't do that. We can't do that. That is, that, that is giving your life over to the flesh and not the spirit. You can't live that way. We've all probably did things you know, in that way at different times. I can't imagine. You know what would make me happy right about now? To go through and eat an entire buffet. 
<laughs> that would make me so happy. But I don't do that because I, I, I can't submit to the flesh because everything has an end result to it. I might enjoy it at the moment, but I'm not going to like it. What I look like later after eating an entire buffet. You know, I, I, the end is everything has an end result that you do sooner or later. Maybe nobody's going to find out about what you did, but there's going to be an end result because I assure you, somebody else saw it. And it doesn't matter if they're here. Uh, anybody, any person in this world, God saw everything that we have ever done. But He still loves us. And He still gives us opportunity to repent and get it right. See, the world we live in and true Christians, we're always going to be in conflict. It's always, you're always going to have a struggle because when you try to live for God, it's, the world, it just don't work out. You're always going to be in conflict all the time. They say, do whatever makes you happy. Go for it. No, you better not go for it. <laughs> Where God says, I have a plan and you will like the result, but you've got to stay the course. You can't veer off like the Galatian people did. Their, their problem was they veered off into works. But we veer off into many other things, not just works. My father used to tell me, he said, boy, you're going to keep getting what you're getting as long as you keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and I had to figure that out. I didn't understand that at the first. You know, I'm like, yeah, he's just saying these things. He thinks he's funny. But it was the truth. Yeah. It was the truth. We're to lead by God's Spirit. When you're led by God's Spirit, it helps you to recognize His voice. Amen. But we don't always like what God has to say to us sometimes, you know. It, it's holding me back. I won't be too much longer. I know we got a late start today. The thinking in this world is messed up. Why is that? Because sin will mess you up. Sin will mess you up. People want to be what God never intended them to be in this world. Look at our world. It has gone crazy. It has. You know, you can't change your physical DNA, right? Whatever you were born with from your mother and your father, that's your DNA. However God, whatever gender He picked for you, that, that's it. God created you that way. When people want to change stuff like that, they're saying, God got it wrong. That's basically what they're saying. God got it wrong. He did not get it wrong. Amen. When I see people who want to change their outward appearance in such ways to something else, sometimes I believe they're ashamed of how God made them. You should never be ashamed of how God made you. Not how God made you. In today's world, what, I mean, you can do a lot of things. You can change your body shape. You can change the color of your hair. And even in today, you can rearrange all kind of things. You can take stuff off and have stuff put on in today's world. But you know what? No matter what you do, it does not change who God made you. You are still the same person. All you did is change the outside. That's all you've done. You haven't changed who God made you. But there's good news before I close. With God's help, but you can change your spiritual DNA. Your spiritual DNA. That means no matter how, where you come from in this world and how you were brought up and what you were taught, between, with you and God helping you to get there, you can change your spiritual DNA. That means you don't have to finish this life how you started it. That is much different than your physical DNA. When we are, when, when we are willing, God is more than able when you were saved, the scripture talks about you were given a new nature. Now I know we struggle with that nature sometimes because that new nature, the apostle Paul described it as the old man. You know, he said he has to keep pushing him down. He wants to rear up. You know, he wants to overcome that new nature. You want to go back to the way you were, but you want to let him have it. You want to do some things to him. Our journey of faith should lead us to God, not away from Him. It says, well, I don't want to turn the other cheek. I don't want to be the bigger man. That's not me. You let the old man rear up in you again. You know what? There's a lot of times you don't want to turn the other cheek. You know it's hard to walk away from something when you know you could do something about it. But you have to walk away sometimes because it's not of God. Those things will be leading you away.
And in closing, let me say this. There are far too many of us that don't want to go through the process that God is trying to take us to. Take us to and through. Because, you know, it's too hard. What do we want in this nation? Oh, give me a three-step process so I can get to where I need to be. Pastor, or maybe give me a pill to fix everything. Just tell me what I need to do. You know what you need to do? And this is including myself. Submit to God. Surrender to God. Well, oh, wait a minute. I'd rather do the three-step process take a pill. You know, jump something catchy down on there that I can do, and it, I'll remember that. I'll put it on my refrigerator. It'll help me that way. There's nothing wrong with three-step processes and every now and then taking a pill for something, but that ain't going to get you where you need to go spiritually. That ain't going to get you where you need to go. Fortunately for us, God is in the restoring business, and He is more than able to work through all of our mess, all the chaos of our life. You know what? I have made so many messes, but God has been right there with me through the mess and helped me clean it up, and He has restored me. Praise God that I serve a God like that. He never forgot me in all my mess and all my chaos and all my sin. He was right there with me. I'm sure he was scratching his head sometimes, like, what is he doing? He knows better than that. One closing thought. I, I had a, uh, I, I don't want to say some people might know the person. I had a relative, I'll leave it that way. I had a relative. This relative, who was a much younger relative. At that time, this is many years ago, at that time they were about 15, 16, something like that. And they were doing some stupid stuff. And I was so mad with them. I was upset with them. They know better than that. They were taught better than that. I, I was so upset when I was like that. And my mother happened to be sitting there. And I don't think she realized the significance of what she said to me. She didn't holler at me. She didn't say anything. She just in a calm voice. All she said to me was, I remember you at that age. Right. It just took all that away from me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my. How much worse was I than what I'm hollering and upset with this person? I was a hundred times worse. But here I am upset. Be humble. Remember where you come from. We've not arrived yet. With every eye, every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today and you're not saved, today can be your day of salvation. There's no shame in that. Everyone needs a day of salvation. If you've never had that day of salvation,